So Rosie, I, I don't want you to take this personally, but if I'm going to have a trusty hound sidekick, I might, I might need a real dog. Guys, this time we have a monitor to review. And in fact, I have this monitor right here to review. So this is a ViewSonic 27 inch free sync monitor. I don't remember the actual letters, but it's a 27 inch free sync monitor. The biggest reason why I wanted to review this guy is this is an amazing budget monitor that also supports free sync. So I wanted to see just how well it performs and I just want to see if it's, you know, really got the features that are going to make it worth the cost. So we're going to go into that. But hey, as always, I'm going to start off just giving you a basic overview of is this product worth it or not. And we'll go into more detail later on. So initially, I have to say that if you have an AMD card and you want adaptive sync technology, then this is a go-to must-have monitor. In fact, if you're around a $200 budget and you're wanting a 27-inch monitor, I think this guy might be it. I, I think this, this monitor is phenomenally priced, has a lot of features, and is doing really well for the budget that it's in. So I highly, highly recommend this monitor. But let's not just say that I highly recommend it. Let's figure out why. Okay, so for starters, let's go ahead and go through some of these settings in the menu here. Um, this guy's got a decent number of features. A lot of things that I learned about monitors being a lot of things that I've never really looked into. So also, I am terrible, terrible with monitor menus. So if I'm kind of fumbling around a little bit, um, well, you know, it's going to happen. I'll also overlay some screens, some actual photos I've taken of the menu because it'll be a little hard to see. But we're going to go ahead and go into this menu. So if you press the one, you get the menu right here and you have all the adjustments. Um, you've got to use the up and down arrows and then you use number two to actually um, adjust things. So, you know, right up at the top here, we have our contrast and brightness. This monitor is very nice and bright, but the gamma isn't too high. And the reason why I say it is um, my little little extra monitor right here just got really high gamma. And it's, it's just there's no amount of brightness I can turn down to not give it that washed out look. This guy is not the case. So I still turn my brightness down, though, to about 40 because it is plenty bright. And I that just seemed like a perfect thing. But I really like that. Um, of course, you've got your input select here. That's pretty self-explanatory. This monitor has a VGA, HDMI, and DisplayPort connectivity. So you can actually manually select those. Uh, not a big deal there. Your audio adjust, you can choose your volume. You can choose to mute it if you're not going to use it. And you can select your um, audio input, whether you want to do that. Um, there's it can use um, DisplayPort, audio in, or HDMI for the audio. I would only use audio in if I was going to use it, but these speakers were really tinny. I didn't expect much out of monitor speakers anyway. And I have a, a, a amplifier with a bookshelf speaker setup. So if you're looking for good quality speakers in the monitor, then <laughs> no, not this monitor. But at this budget, I wouldn't expect them to put a bow surround in a monitor either. Um, so coming down here to color adjust, um, you can choose these different um, presets here. And so these things will do various different things. But for instance, if you go to the bluish, it adds a little more of a bluer tint, which would also possibly help if you're in like a large daylight brightness setting, like I have lots of windows in a room, kind of help with the eye strain. If you do warm, this is really good for like normal halogen type lights where it's got that little bit of a yellowish hue so that you won't have eye strain. Of course, for my room and for gaming purposes, I just prefer native. I feel like that gives me the best color setup. So you got some information here. You can look at the you know various frequencies and stuff. If you go here, there's a manual image adjust. You can change positions and stuff, which is kind of useful, but I didn't need any of it. In fact, it's all grayed out right now. Um, it, it, this thing just you know fit perfectly. What we do have in here is the dynamic contrast. Dynamic contrast will adjust, basically adjust the brightness of the monitor depending on how much white is showing on the screen. So if you pull up like a Google web page, this scene will dim automatically. In fact, if I go ahead and enable this, 
in that you won't see a huge amount. You might have seen a couple of tones there, but if I bring up this web browser here, then this scene will, will sometimes dim a little bit and not be quite so bright, and then it'll kind of kind of does its own little thing. Now, the thing about dynamic contrast is it's adjusting the contrast ratio, so it's not actually doing brightness. But what you're going to feel like you're seeing is brightness. So I found that I wasn't a big fan of dynamic contrast. There's also an advanced one that we're going to get to here in a sec. So I'm going to go ahead and disable that. Of course, you have your eco mode if you want to save a little bit of energy. The blue light filter is a more detailed approach to handling eye strain. So if you find that you have a lot of eye strain issues or a lot of high headaches, it's probably because the hue coming off of your monitor is too blue to the light in your room, which might have more of a yellowish hue. If you start turning this baby down, it's going to change the hue of this monitor so that it looks a little more yellow. Now, my room, I tend to keep it lit up with some daylight bulbs, so I don't have that problem. At work, I had that problem big time. I had to get, I actually used a program called Flux that does that from a desktop level, can adjust to the daylight that's outside automatically as well. So that's another way to do it. Very helpful if you have eye strain problems. All right, so coming on down, you get to the advanced image adjust. Of course, you've got some view modes here that is, um, that's pretty nice. Um, standard game, movie, web, text, mono. These are all things to change the general color setups. Even though the game is supposed to be better for like gaming and stuff, and there's different game modes, I prefer to not use any of them. And I ended up preferring to just go with a standard view mode. I don't like all the, the changing in different colors, but those give you a lot of options, and you might find something that you like better for the type of games you play. So I thought that was a good feature set. Um, here we have AMD FreeSync. We'll go into that a little bit more in, in just a little bit. Response time. So in general, response time is how fast it takes the monitor to go from like white to black. And they measure that in other ways too, which is gray to gray. Now this monitor has a, what is it, a one millisecond response time, which is really fast for a budget monitor, but it's also a gray to gray response. So this is not going to respond as fast as some of those higher end ASUS type monitors. But overall, I feel like it has a really good response time. I did some searching online, and basically most people seem to agree that the middle section, which is advanced on this one, is the best setting. In my gaming test, I found that to be the case. I noticed a little bit of ghosting and stuff. Advanced just looked really smooth, so we stuck it there. Um, the black stabilization feature is really nice. You can turn this guy up. And what it'll do is it'll really make the black show up so you can actually see all the color detail. You can kind of see it a little bit in my desktop. Maybe not from the camera there, but I can definitely see it. The only thing is I do feel like it washes the colors out ever so slightly. So I found that finding the perfect balance of black stabilization and the color you like to see is a good place to set it. I end up leaving it at the default of 5. And yes, I can see very clearly in most of all my game titles. I thought it was a really nice feature. Now here we get into the advanced DCR, and you can adjust this according to how high and how, how dramatic you want the contrast ratio to change. What I noticed about advanced DCR is the higher you get, the more everything in the monitor, this, all the colors just seem like they pop out. Everything gets really, really sharp. And then on top of that, if I bring up like a Google page here, everything just gets very, very crisp. If I start turning this thing back down, it kind of brings some of that setting back. And so, as you can see, it just gets a lot brighter. The thing is, is that this brightness level changes while you're playing a game, and I wasn't a big fan of it. I ended up leaving it off. But it does add some extra crispness to the screen. Have to try it out, see what you like. I feel like if I was only web browsing and doing articles, advanced DCR might be something I'd be more of a fond of, but during gaming, I didn't find it to be something I enjoyed as much. So I end up skipping on that. But that's a nice feature that I haven't seen on, on a lot of monitors that I've used. Now finally, if we head down here to the setup menu, most of this is pretty straightforward. You got your resolution notices, OSD positions, timeouts, background, so on and so forth, language select. But at the very bottom here, you've got the display port indicator. Um, you got display port 1.2, and if you want that enabled or not. Generally, you're probably going to want to enable that because most graphics cards are going to support DisplayPort 1.2. But if you have an older GPU, check your specifications, see what DisplayPort version is. You might want to disable that feature. So those are all the menu settings there. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step, which is getting FreeSync to work properly on this monitor. 
Okay, guys, let's talk about setting up FreeSync. Now, if you're used to your normal plug-and-play technologies, you think just plug it in and go, you're good. You are not, it would not be the case in this particular monitor. FreeSync actually took me a little while to figure out in order to get it to work properly. So we're going to go through that. So first thing we need to realize is, is you have to use a DisplayPort connection. It will not work with the HDMI. It will not work with the VGA. Have to use DisplayPort. Here's the other thing. If you have like a DVI to DisplayPort adapter, don't expect that to work. I tried that, couldn't even get picture to come up on the screen. Now maybe I didn't have the right kind of adapter, but overall, your best bet is just pick up like a $5 uh, uh, DisplayPort cable from Amazon, you'll be good to go. So once you got that there, then you're, you're ready to start your FreeSync journey. Now, I say that this isn't plug and play. Once I got everything figured out, it's really not that complicated, but we need to make sure that we've got all the settings set right. So let's go back into the monitor menu. Now we went through this already a little bit, but we'll just, we'll just go through it one more time. So if we go here to the manual image adjust, oops, wrong one. Let's go back to the advanced image adjust, re, uh, advanced image adjust. I, I can talk sometimes. So if you look here, we got the AMD FreeSync. So that has to be enabled first. And then once again, I did touch on this before, I'll touch on it again, go into the setup menu and then scroll down to the bottom and make sure that your DisplayPort 1.2 is enabled. Now, you need to make sure that you have DisplayPort 1.2 on your graphics card, but I have a feeling most GPUs do. I'm using an R9 290 and it is DisplayPort 1.2. So it's pretty unlikely that you're gonna have that, but if you have an older GPU, double check the specifications, make sure that you have that. So once you got those two settings enabled, you're set up on the monitor, monitor side. Now we need to go into the graphics card side. So if you're like me, you probably have your Radeon settings installed, your latest driver. I definitely recommend keeping your latest drivers installed, which currently is the, uh, I believe, 16.7.3 for AMD. Now remember, also, FreeSync is an AMD exclusive right now. NVIDIA has got their G-Sync, so this would not work with an NVIDIA GPU. So you're going to come in here, and in this top tab, you've got a display. And you're going to see here free sync. Now, I noticed when I first set all this up that this was defaulted to off, so I had to turn it on. Now, I've got it on. I'm good to go, right? I am because I've already set some settings, but you might not be. Now, if you mouse over your AMD free sync, you're going to see a little thing that comes up that says refresh rate reported, and it's going to say, for me, 48 to 75 hertz. That is the range of this monitor. But when I first turned this on, the range was 48 to 60. And I was like, wait, I should be getting up to 75. Why am I not getting this? And here's where it got interesting. So what I had to do is now let's go to display settings, which is just built into Windows 10 here. Click on that. Once you get this page to customize your display, come to the bottom here, advanced display settings. Once you get here, scroll all the way to the bottom. And this is the easiest way I found to get to this display adapter properties. Now there's probably other ways to get to it. You could probably do the search bar, but hey, this is just the easy click, point, click, point, so on and so forth. Once you get this display's properties up, click on the monitor tab, and you're gonna see right here under monitor settings, a screen refresh rate. And as you can see, mine's is set to 75 Hertz, but Windows likes to default that to 60. So once you get that set to 75 Hertz, click apply, say okay. Now I've already had it set there, but normally you'll see a window that says, hey, you wanna keep these settings? Sure. And then when you come back to your AMD Radeon settings, you can go to your free sync and see that you'll have the proper reported refresh rate of 48 to 75 Hertz. So that is how you set up all the free sync settings. If you don't have every one of those things set up, you're gonna miss out on some of the benefits of free sync. So I hope that helps out a little bit. Let's go ahead now and go into a little test that I'm gonna devise. It's the best way I feel like that I can help to try to show the benefits of FreeSync versus your standard typical 60 Hertz refresh rate monitor. All right, guys, so we're gonna go ahead and test this out. So here's the thing. I've got a 1080p camera recording at about 30 frames per second. The likelihood of you being able to see tears and stutters are gonna be pretty low. I would need something that would have a really high playback. And then on top of that, uploading to YouTube, I can only play back at a max of 60 frames per second, which will still be iffy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a run through the mountain village on Tomb Raider, and we'll see how this goes. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call out any stutter, 
tear flicker that I see and try to give it my best guess. And we're going to count this. So right now I'm emulating a 60 hertz refresh monitor, no free sync, just straight up crossfire, max settings, Tomb Raider. And let's make a little run, see what happens. So that might, I mean, just these, even these quick movements, it's like, I'm not sure, but that could be just a little bit of tear. Maybe like that there, I saw just a little bit of a ripple in the center of the screen. So, I don't know, let's see, can I kill a chicken? Wow, I don't even know how I did that. That was lucky. All right, so, you know, so far, so good. You know, it's, it, this is pretty smooth. I'm not seeing a ton of stuff. Let's go ahead and try to get across some terrain and find out what else we got going on here. All right. I miss the buttons. All right, so usually I like to kind of come through this little house area, see what's going on. I mean, so far everything's been pretty smooth. I'm not seeing a whole lot of stutters, a whole lot of tears. It's looking pretty good. And let's start getting into some more scenery here. Moving along nicely. Take a look at the waterfall. Everything's looking pretty good. All right, let's make some climbs. Jumping and jumping. So overall, we're seeing a pretty good experience. Now, there, there, right there, I just saw a tear go across the screen just as I was hitting into this waterfall area. So let's go check out a tomb real quick. All right. Got nice and a little bit wet. Come through here. Now, right here, I'll see, you'll see a little bit of a flash of light. That's just something with the game. Um, you might see it, you might not. Now, there's a little bit of a stutter when she got her torch up. So when she picked up her torch coming into this dark section. So that could be something that our free sync might smooth out. Walking through, walking through, nice and dark, creepy, bone skeletons. You know, for an island that nobody can find, there's a lot of dead people on it. Ever notice that? All right, so if I go to a campsite, you know, that's pretty smooth. Can't imagine that's anything that is from the refresh rate. So coming through here, let's just shove this thing off. Come up here, let's just see if anything happens. Oh, missed it. So considering that I'm using the display port and you know keeping it at 60 hertz i'm pretty impressed that i feel like display port might have a lot to do with this too but so far so good there's a little bit of a, a kind of a weird tear that looked like i saw when i hit that rope so far so good though All right, now see, there was a little stutter going from one scene to the next. Whether that's the game or the refresh rate, we'll find out. All right, so I wish I could just run through these tombs. Nice and dark. The colors in this monitor look fantastic. I really do like how well everything comes. Even the dark sections, if the blacks look appropriate. It doesn't look like it's hard to see and I'm squinting in details. So there's that light flicker. That's just been a normal thing in that section of the tomb. So I'm not gonna not gonna count that. All right. Now there is some definite weird stuttering going on. Some of that is the mo is the the water effect, but some of that was definitely the um, the monitor. So I saw some some pretty good stuttering, or that was more of a tearing that I was seeing with that water effect. All right. Here we go again. Ooh, wow. Almost fell off of that. But Laura's got mad skills and reaction times. All right, where's that section that goes out? 
to where I want to go. Uh, can I have those? Nope, I don't know where I want to go. Alright, so that is a jump I don't think I can quite make, but I know what I need to do. Oops, come back here. We're going to flip off of here. Let's go through some mountaintops. Probably hear those fans going with a crossfire setup of 290s. They work pretty hard. So let's go through these mountaintops see what happens. We're going to have some more open, sprawling scenes. And it's going to probably make a difference on how, things, how smoothly things run. So far, so good. I'm not seeing a whole lot right now. So, I mean... Considering that this game is AMD optimized, this one ran pretty smooth. One misstep and it's your death. Now that looked like a, with a little bit of that jerky movement there when I was jumping. I thought I caught a tear there. All right. So far, so good. Hmm, I think I just saw a little bit of a tear across the center as I was jumping up onto that. Alright, let's go to the top of the mountain. I've been to the top of the mountain, yeah. Randy Savage, I am not. So yeah, there's a quick little tour of the mountain village area, wandering around Tomb Raider. Nice sceneries. Overall, that was a pretty smooth experience. So that's just with a straight up 60 hertz refresh, no free sync. Let's go to our free sync next. Okay guys, time for Tomb Raider Run Test 2. Now this time we have free sync enabled, we have our full refresh range. We're gonna try to make the same run that we basically ran last time. So, hey, let's see if I can get lucky and kill another chicken. So one thing that I feel like I noticed right off the bat is when I switch to my aiming, it feels a lot smoother. It feels like the transition going into it is an actual fluid moment movement rather than just kind of a jerky, choppy, oh, there it is, hey, die bird. So it makes it a little easier for me to zoom in and click on something. I have no idea, oh, hey, Warthog. Oh, I missed him. Missed him again. Man, I'd be a bad hunter at this. So, yeah, just, I didn't even realize that till this back-to-back -back run, but going from the first scene and coming into that aiming is already feeling a lot smoother. Now, so far, I haven't seen much of anything. I'm trying to see to turn. I, that might have been a minor tear, but mm, that one's too hard to tell. So I think if I'm like in a iffy moment, I might do like a half a point. I don't know. It's just so subjective anyway that you know. Who knows? All right, but so far, this is really, really clear. So let's try to get back up to the top here. Figure out where we're going. And jump, and jump. All right. So, so far, coming up into the bridge here, let's get wet. Okay, so there I saw the camera movement, zoom in, there's that weird funky light thing, it's just a game issue. But, okay, now that right there, that was impressive. If you notice, we had a big stutter, if you remember the last time, we had a big stutter going from the open light scene to flipping the torch on and going into this darker thing. That transition was smooth, which means this isn't my graphics card. This is the actual refresh rate. So what's happening is my frame rate's dropping probably below the 60 frames second, but not below my 48. And so when it does that, you get that massive stutter. But with the, with the FreeSync technology, that stutter is gone and the, the play is just so much smoother. No tearing with the walking through the water. No, let's push this thing off. Shove. Laura's one tough gal. What can I say? My foot injures itself without me doing anything. I don't even know how she does all this. 
Seriously, I've been on crutches for like the past five days. I had some weird flare up in my foot. I don't know. So yeah, video game hero, I will never be. All right, well, let's swing out of here. Now, I remember seeing a little bit of a tear on the rope last time. That was perfectly smooth. And whenever you swing out of a dungeon, you get a nice little fancy music like, hey, you did it, or a tomb. So that could have something to do with, okay, now there was a stutter. I definitely saw a stutter that time. So it goes to show that all stutters aren't going to go away because it, uh, that could be a lot to do with the video cards itself. My video cards seem to be working a little less hard. My fans just dropped, and that's kind of weird. The free sync might be uh, helping things not work as hard, although I'm not really sure how that would actually work out. All right, there's that weird light flicker, but that's nothing that counts against anything, because that's just the game. All right, let's walk out of here. Now, last time we walked out of here, there was just an, this amazing amount of tearing that happened with the water effects. This time, nothing. Like, just brilliant. So, that is a nice, nice improvement. Let's come back up here. It's really? Okay, last time I kind of went off the grid a little bit. Come on. Wow, that's the second time I almost fell off. So, crawling up here, jumping around, being adventurous. Man, it's just so hard to detect any kind of tear while I'm, while, I'm, while I'm playing this. It's not to say that they're not there. It's just to say that if they are there, they're very hard to, to find. Right there, for instance, you know, going from having a pull right in the middle of my shot and then going back to the open, that is usually something that's very susceptible to a tear, and I didn't see one. So that's impressive. All right, let's shoot up here. Let's go exploring the mountains again. Okay, I made it. Like I'm going a little too far to the right there. It's kind of making me nervous. All right, jumping through. Hmm, maybe I saw a hint of a tear, but I'm, ugh, I really couldn't tell on, oh crap, well, I'm going to die now. Laura has died. I don't know why she didn't grab the rope, though. She did not like that rope. Oh, hey, cool. Right back into here. Let's try this again. Okay, I did, definitely didn't see any tear that time, so really hard to say what's, what's happening, what's not. Leap of faith. I could never do this. I could never jump the chasm and expect to make it. Hmm. Crawl up to here. Let's go back to the top of the mountain. Yeah. Take a look around at the scenery. Okay, I did see just a... There's a little bit of a tear that goes on, but then again, it's re related to this this thing of sunlight. So that may not even be the free sync thing there. So, yeah. Looking around these mountaintops and stuff, everything's really smooth. So, there we have it. There's our free sync test versus our original test. I'll go ahead and calculate these results, and we'll sum it up, get a conclusion to this. Okay, guys, so I have here in my hands a very scientific approach to determining a normal refresh rate versus an adaptive refresh rate. Piece of paper with check marks. So I just went through my two test runs. And so without FreeSync, running a typical 60 hertz refresh rate, and the reason why I bring that up is because a lot of your budget 27-inch monitors are going to come in like that. They're going to come with those kind of specs. I had three stutters and a total of five tears. So I had a couple of half ones that I counted, but they count as a full point. So three stutters, five tears now. Now we got free sync. We have this ViewSonic monitor. We have free sync enabled. We have a refresh range of only 48 to 75 hertz. It's not a huge range. I mean, some of the more expensive free sync, free sync monitors go much higher and can go as low as 40 frames per second. 
And yet, with all that in mind, I had one stutter that was at the exact same place for both videos. I thought it was a different place, but it turned out to be the same when I was testing it. And I had two, maybe half a tears, which ended up being one tear. So three versus one stutter and a total of five tears versus like a total of uh, an added up of maybe one tear. That settles it for me. I'm saying right now that FreeSync is it. But that's not the only thing about testing. This monitor does just look great. I feel like the brightness and contrast levels are great. I believe the colors are great. I don't have a colorometer and those are expensive. But here's the thing about that. It would be neat to see exactly how well this monitor is reproducing colors and actually measure it. But there's also the fact that you can adjust the colors to make them a little more vibrant. And the way I do that is I go into the Radeon settings, I go to preferences, and then I have to go to the Radeon additional settings because they're not in this uh, initial window. So that thing sometimes takes a little bit to load. So once it finally pops up, if you come here, if you notice, I'm actually already here. My digital flat, flat panel displays. And then if you come through here, you've got the second, the second um, option underneath that, display color. And so right here, there's saturation. The default setting is 100. I tweak that up to 110. It makes those colors just really pop and make my games look awesome. And so that's just one thing I really like to do. And because we've got that setting, NVIDIA has a similar setting, because that's there, I don't, usually colors aren't a big issue because usually you can make the colors look where you want them to be. But that's not always true. Like I said, little Mr. Gamut Out guy here, there's nothing I can do about him. He just looks washed out all the time. So if this monitor does look excellent. The build quality is excellent. I mean, for the price, it's not like high end with like a glass panel and stuff, but compared to some of the other budget monitors I've seen, it feels a lot more sturdy. Everything about this monitor is pretty top notch. So let's go ahead and give this thing an award and a conclusion. Should you buy this monitor? Well, I say that we've got a pretty good looking setup so far. So initially we have a pretty good quality feel. Um, we have a lot of features, a lot of things that are pretty nice. You know, some of this stuff isn't quite as good as some high-end monitors, but we're not expecting to pay as much. So overall, I feel like we're doing pretty good with this monitor so far. We did our free sync versus our normal 60 hertz, just standard straight refresh rate monitor test, and it came out great. We had far less stutters and far less tears. Now that's subjective. I had to just call it out as I was seeing it, but I mean, I'm a gamer. I see these things. You see these things. You're gamers. You know the difference when you're playing if it's legit. You know when it's just hype. Um, as far as setting up free sync, that is a little bit problematic in the sense that it was a little harder than just plug and play. And I think that's something that I hope gets worked on in the future, that it's a little bit easier to enable it and you're just good to go. And I don't know if that's just a specific thing to ViewSonic or other monitors in general. But overall, I've got a good complete guide now here on how to set that up. So if you get one of these, you can go through my guide, make sure you got all the settings, you know you're going to take full advantage of FreeSync. I did notice though, I do get lockups and some pretty bad driver issues because of my Crossfire and FreeSync being enabled. That is an AMD glitch. So if you don't have Crossfire, you're going to be fine. But with Crossfire enabled, you're going to have some issues. I personally love Crossfire or multi-GPU setups, so it's one of those things that I'm willing to, to, to work through and eventually figure it out. But if you have Crossfire, you might be have some problems with the FreeSync. I've already notified AMD. Hopefully, they'll be looking into a fix. So really, it's going to come down to how much do these monitors cost? I have Amazon up right here. And right now, this VX2757-MHD 27-inch monitor with FreeSync technology is $179.88 with free shipping. That is a 27-inch 1080p monitor for $180 bucks, basically. On top of having FreeSync and all those other features, I, I'm already like, what? That's super competitive with just normal monitors that don't have adaptive sync technology. You come over here to Newegg, and it's 185 bucks and a 99 cent shipping. So you're looking at you're looking at what 186 total roughly. And in this case, it looks like we're in stock now in both places. I know ViewSonic's been having trouble keeping these monitors in stock. It took them a, when I asked about the review sample, it took them a while to get it to me because they've been having trouble keeping these guys. I see why. 
you can't beat this deal. Here's the thing. G-Sync is a proprietary technology. And while in some, I've heard some people say they like it better and it runs smoother, you're also going to pay more for it. You're not going to find a 1080p G-Sync monitor at this price. And you're going to have trouble finding a 27-inch monitor at this price. This monitor is an absolute steal. I, I don't know why they're priced this low. There's just no other way to do this. This is a clear, pure overclock editor's choice. And I'm saying that if you're looking to get a better monitor and you don't really know how much cash you can spend and you're not planning on spending hundreds of dollars, but you think you can maybe get by with 150 to 200, then this just this should be your pick right here, especially if you have an AMD card. If you have NVIDIA, it's still a really good monitor, just in and of itself. So either way, I just don't know that it's it's got better quality and a really good picture. This is a darn good steal for, for the price that it's at. So yeah, I say get one and try it out. So hey, overall, ViewSonic, great job, editor's choice. Let me know what you think about the review. I know this was going to go a little longer because of those free sync and regular refresh rate tests that I did. But let me know if you think I covered everything good. I try to keep these as short as I can, but uh, sometimes they just they go longer than I want them to go. Let me know in the comments. Tell me what you think of this review. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to try to keep bringing more to you. I'll catch you next time.